initially drawn to punk rock uh, simply because it was a way of expressing something I was feeling that I didn't understand. I was angry and I was unhappy. Um, and what I felt, at least uh, at the time, was going on in hardcore was all of the same anger when I first started going to punk shows. But there was a lot more like support. People cared about each other. We were there together. We were trying to make something happen together. It felt like we were, it, it just felt a lot more like a community and not just you know, I fucking hate myself. Right. You know, I hate yeah. my parents. It was like... <laughs> and there's st still plenty of that, but I think it was like all of us feeling that way. Mm. That's, that's kind of what true. Yeah, same, same. I mean, it's, mm. it sounds cliche, but... I don't know how many times I saw Mushroud play. Mm. Uh, I don't know how many times I saw Kensington or For Life play. Wow. Um, I know, there were a lot of bands. I still have those demo tapes. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Um, as far as, uh, I mean, I think they, there were a few Pennsylvania bands that were important, not just because of what they said. You know, I, I didn't get any crutch tattoos or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but Pennsylvania, um, Pennsylvania Hardcore was a lot of people who were trying to make shows happen wherever they could. And that was really inspiring to me. The fact that I went to shows at colleges, at coffee shops, at bars, at BFW all. halls. <laughs> yeah, wh yeah, whether I was in Lansdale or, <laughs> or, 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 Fra Street. Or, yeah. or, or, you know, Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, there were so many bands, and bands I never got to see. You know, I had the uh, the Feeble 7-inch. I love that. Nice. Um, or uh, the, older... The one, the one on back tub basic. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, uh, you know, and, and bands that weren't even quite clear. I mean... Would you say that Suburban Hoods was a hardcore band? Right. I don't know, but I saw them play. It was much. like hardcore kids playing hardcore shows, but not. It's it's weird, like what you can consider hardcore. Like, like you would have bands of that style that didn't come from the scene that just wouldn't be considered. But if you, if it just because of who it was and where they played and what they did, like, it's it's, it's funny sometimes, like how you can rope something into a particular genre based on that work. How about, oh, let's go into the scary department. <laughs> <laughs> the violence and the fights that seem to follow, especially Philly. How about, let's go late 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go there, don't you? <laughs> yes, we do. <sighs> what's the statute of limitations? I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, so what, what stories can we not tell? Yeah. Any particular one that this comes up right here? Nope, don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know anybody. I don't know anything. I, I don't know who you are, sir. Uh, <laughs> I, I plead the fifth. I'm gonna. I mean, speak to my lawyer. <laughs> I, I, I will be. I will be very honest in that. Um, I got to live in a dream world because I don't. I don't get in fights, and He's I knew all. Nice guy. I'm, I'm a nice guy, but I knew all the guys who did. Yeah. So I never had to feel. The rough end of it. At the time, the fact that it was scary, that there was violence, that things were going down, that was just fun for me. That was like part of why it was exciting. Only now looking back on it do I go, oh man, we almost shut down so many venues. And I say we, 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 we did. I, yeah, yeah. And I say we, I didn't do anything. I was just there. But because I knew 95% of the time that no one was going to, you know, bother me, I just thought it was fine. Now that it's Stay a lot, sidelines watching, right. you know, yeah. looking, oh, look at my friends being assholes, ruining everything. Cool. Right. I did a lot of that too, but yeah, I regret being a part of some of that stuff. A lot of that stuff. Like, look, I mean, yeah, it, it, it was really stupid, but you know, you're young kids and you're angry at, at, at life and whatever, and it just shit happens, I guess. The the thing the thing of I'm glad I'm glad most of us grew up. Right. And, and are not terrible people so much anymore, okay. And, uh, yeah. I, it, 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 it could have ended a lot worse than it did for a lot of people, myself included. I mean, they're, they're, I, with, with, you know, without sounding cliche, dead or in jail, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but definitely could have ended up that way. We did some stuff. Stupid, stupid, stupid shit that I look back on now and I'm just like, really? That happened? We did that? What the fuck? Like, 
Yeah. You know, whether it's breaking giant potted plants over people's heads or putting somebody through a table or, you know, pistol whipping somebody or whatever. <laughs> My most intense church memory was actually when I went to the church the first time I got to see uh, I Hate You was at the church. Ah, and it was, it was that... Was uh, it was that One Life Crew show that One Life Crew didn't show up for. Thank God. One of many, you know, <laughs> and uh, and and coming correctly, oh, which was also back. its own thing. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's funny when you asked us about Pennsylvania bands. I didn't think about that. I, I hate you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, little... that was a band. Um, yeah, that was that was a true show. Or Starlog, so many shows. Like, uh, you know, whether it it was, did you go to that one where it was? Um, uh, cave in and converge, and then all the bands that were like long names. Oh, you know, the, like, the Adam Doll benefit. I think so. Cameron. Well, and it was the one where and Cave in made it through one song, and all their equipment died, and then they just didn't play. And that was like why I got to the show. Um, uh, or is that the one where they like their van had caught on fire while they were on their way to the show? Because that happened once. You could do a documentary of horrible things that happened to Cave in actually. That would yeah. be the whole <laughs> that would be the whole like, that would be like two hours, I feel oh. like. Um, another place, I mean, and not that it was a great venue, but and it had the worst bathroom in the history of music venues. Worst than GVs? Well, I mean the throne <laughs> wasn't there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. was just I mean, it was it was bad. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was like I said, that place was a shithole, but it was our shithole. I, I had a lot of fun there back in the day. And it's yeah. funny now, like, looking back at, like, the bands I saw in that place, how fucking huge some of them are now. Yeah. Like, doing, like, arena tours and fucking, you know, like, Lamb of God and all that stuff, playing on, like, Ozfest and all that shit. It's like, yeah, it's all them in some shitty fucking warehouse in West Philly. Uh, I think it's harder for kids to understand now that... Uh, at a certain point, there were a lot of like, uh, there were some less boundaries than there are now. Yeah, when kids, definitely. Kids be, 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 before metalcore was a dirty word. <laughs> right. For us, it just it kept getting heavier, and the crowd got more intense. It got heavier, but you didn't necessarily. You still felt like you were. I didn't feel weird that I was at that show. You saw, God forbid, uh, play with you know bands that maybe might seem more traditionally hardcore. You weren't like. I can't believe that band is here. Why is that band right, here? They don't right. belong here. You know, it wasn't... The, the, the guys in the band might make you feel like a band. You might go see, and it'd be like a bunch of Hessian dudes. That would be... That, that would be the band. It wasn't necessarily the music they were doing. It was who they were. Mm -hmm. They might not fit that show. Um, but you could see, you know, all kinds of different bands and, like, that that the musical style would change. So, I think for me, with, with some of those bands, I, I worry that you get to a certain level of success and you want to repeat that success. So you change your songwriting in order to continue that success. Like people really liked it when we did that. So let's do that again. Right. And we'll continue to be successful. And I think that's the only limitation. But I'm certainly not going to be good if someone making money when I'm not. If, if making they're doing, yeah. Oh. <laughs> if, if they're doing their thing, they're happy doing what they're doing. Fuck it, yeah, man. whatever. No. This is hardcore. Is kind of a big deal. Uh, seven years now, and it's like. This year we just moved to a fucking huge venue, doubled our capacity, and sold it out. So, I think somebody's doing something right there. So, big ups to Joe and his awesome, awesome, awesome staff. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's fucking phenomenal. Like you literally have people coming from all over the world for that. Like that's that that is amazing to me. Like it, it's just like at this point I'm just like oh yeah you know like. This this turned into a huge thing. Like I'm working on this. This is this is amazing. It's awesome. And especially like this past year, like where we had like an increased role in making it happen. So as opposed to just like working the door or whatever. Yeah, I mean it, that that that's amazing to me. And, and I'm like some of the bands that have played that thing. I'm just like mind-boggling. Like fucking suicidal tendencies played this year. That's crazy. I remember. The first, the first time I saw Suicidal was at it playing with Metallica and dancing in like ninety four or something, like, you know, a huge outdoor amphitheater and now like and now it's like, yeah, now they're playing this show that I work on. Yeah. Mind blown, you know. I think uh when you were asking about it, you know, when people write the history of 
hardcore on the East Coast, they will mention some other cities besides Philadelphia a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's due to maybe things in the 80s, whatever, whatever. But the point is, is any insecurity we may or may not have felt, you know, I hope anyone from Philly, whether they still go to shows or they haven't been to a show since, you know, whatever, Kill Your Idols broke up or something. Uh, the point being is that this is hardcore's huge and it's massive and it's well done. And there's so much that can go wrong with a fest, especially a fest of this kind of music where just inherently bands burn out, kids get jaded, they get tired of it, they like, they want the new thing, last year's thing is boring, or they want the thing that broke up 20 years ago and you have to get all these guys back together that don't even like each other anymore. There's so many weird things to do. The fact that Joe's been able to pull it off when, you know, a lot of our feeling around Philly hardcore, it's been up and down, you know, that yeah. there's there's been times when I didn't know if there were going to be hardcore shows in this city anymore. And now to have one of, I mean, that fe- I mean, I'm mean, i not even saying this because I do it. You know, I do very little with it. I'm just saying it is amazing. It's yeah. an amazing thing that happens in a city where people weren't necessarily thinking like, oh, Philly, that's... that's yeah, just like sitting thinking. back and taking it all in there that weekend. I was just like, this is fucking amazing. Mm. Just, I mean, every year I was just like, this is really fucking cool. It's a really cool thing. I don't know if people fully appreciate how awesome it is and how much, like, work goes into it. And, like, this year especially, just, you know, the whole upgrading thing. It, it was just massive. Like, Word. Um, how about all uh, shows at the Trocadero back in the day? <laughs> Any stories stick out of that place? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, the, the trial station was a cool fucking venue back in the day, back when we were peeing into the horse trough in the men's room, uh, <laughs> before they remodeled. But no, like, back in the day, there was, like, legit hardcore shows at the truck. It was actually a cool venue. Not to dog it now. Okay? You know, somebody works there in this room. But, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, like, it, it, it is what it is, but, like, yeah, back in the day, it was cool. I mean, before there was a barricade there, even. It was, it was a lot of fun. Then someone had to go and like hurt themselves at a downset show and threaten to sue and ruin everybody's fun. But you know, all good things come to an end, I guess. No, I, I actually saw a lot of really good shit there back in the day, and saw some really crazy shit there back in the day. Maybe it was part of some crazy shit there back in the day, but no, it was. The truck did really cool shit back in like the nineties and stuff. It was. The thing about the truck was that a lot of times, if there was at least when I started going there the shows were big enough that you didn't know who was going to be there. So like some local shows, it might still not be a safe environment, but you would know who was going to be there. It was like your peoples. The truck, that was kind of like the pro leagues or something. There was a lot of <laughs> normals there or people there who you weren't sure who was going to, and you'd see some dude and be like, i never seen that dude before. He's a real big dude. And he's looking at me like I'm a problem. You know? And so there was always a little bit of that element, but there were some great things there too. And it was nice. It really reminded you that hardcore wasn't just a thing that happened in someone's garage or at a VFW hall. Like, no disrespect to VFW hall, but, you know, a dude on a linoleum floor with, like, fluorescent lights overhead is different than a stage with an actual sound system where you could, like, stage that well. Uh, Not that much. But, but, you know... Until they ruined their fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember one of my strong... one One of my really visceral memories from the truck was when Vision played, and remember they cut the power... And, and they kept playing. Yeah, they just kept playing. And that was actually the first time that I walked on heads. I was like, I'm freaking out. And I just climbed up and I just went across the crack. I eventually fell. But uh, <laughs> in the moment, I was like, I am the lord of all things hardcore. Ah! You know, it was crazy. It was so good. Um, but yeah, it, it, again, you know, as with anything, safety concerns and money and lots of things, it's changed a little bit. But like, Tourists, right? I mean, you, you can't expect everybody to, you know, probably people grow up, grow up, <laughs> or or move on, do their thing. You know, it's not for everybody. It's just kind of a phase of passing through. Whatever, like, it is what it is. You, you either you're here or you're not. Like, whatever. Like, you were there at the time. You did your thing. Go do your new thing. Go fucking get your real job and have your kids and have your fucking white picket fence and two car garage, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Like that's not, I don't fucking care. Um, That's not what I want. That's not my life. Like, fuck it. I don't like, I've I've never wanted that. That's never going to be me. That's not who I am. I don't care. Chris is so angry. I'm not. (laughs) I I mean, yeah, I I guess I, that's why I'm still here. (laughs) 
I'm, I'm, you know, I'm more sociological about it in my sense that like hardcore still new. I mean, things don't happen in in thirty year periods that often, you know. And it's it's been a certain amount of time. And unlike some of the generations that went before us, I feel like people about our age are more likely. I can't believe my phone just went off. I feel like unlike some of the people that Editing. went before us, uh, people our age are more likely to come back and participate again. Like I, I, I've noticed more and more people in their early 30s who I thought had moved on and gotten real jobs and become adults in the ways that we sort of make fun of it. I'm gonna pretend I'm still in my early 30s, go ahead. Yeah, no, 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 but I, I was gonna say, just slightly younger. Uh, they come back and it's like totally fine. And I, I don't know what that's about. People who were going uh, earlier than us, you know, some people that are older than us, they don't come back. You know, it's, they've moved on with their lives. And I wonder if uh, things are changing such that people realize in some cases you don't have to choose. You can go to shows, you can even be in a band and still lead a normal, a, a, you know, a, a normal. relatively normal life as long as you're willing to give up some small things and realize that those things weren't that fucking important in the first place. You know what I mean? Um, and realize that some of the things you learned when you were here, you're still using. The amount of people I meet who like, they might not go to shows anymore, partly because they just don't like some of the newer bands, but like you talk to them and you realize like, oh, this meant something. You, the, what you learned when we were all standing in that room together, or not standing in that room together, uh, they matter to you now. That's more important to me. You know, granted, I'd love for them to come back, especially if they're gonna pay for a show. Uh, that would be great. Yeah, but, yeah. but if they don't yeah, come yeah, back, yeah. but it's still a part of who they are, you know, whatever, I'm not gonna judge them. Yeah, as long as you're not sitting there going, oh, that was dumb. Oh, was so, so I grew like, up. I These grew up, I can't believe so you still immature. do that bullshit. Uh, grow the fuck up. When are you going to get a real life? When are you going to get a job? Blah, blah, blah. You know? Yo, I got right. two master's degrees. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry Dad. All right, All right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got two master's degrees. He's got one for both of us. What you asked about? Starkweather was intense. And they were one of the early bands that like described themselves in a way that made you want, before I even heard them, I wanted to know about Starkweather because of how they presented themselves. Um, and then once I finally saw them, it was like, ugh. Um, you know, I don't know how many blood oaths you can take not to play live and then break them. So <laughs> there's a little bit of that. I wonder if like digits were removed. But other than that, I mean, they're so underrated and so musically, to me, important. And I wonder how many people you talk to who are, you know, making money now if you're like, did you know Starkweather that they were important to them? You know, it just seems they're such a huge band. And still, I don't know why they are not <laughs> more well regarded than they are, because like bands that have come around since then that basically doing the same thing have gotten huge. And meanwhile, like I, I don't understand how Converge has been basically trying to be Starkweather for the last fifteen years, and they're the biggest thing going now still. And nobody understands that. And that's not a diss on Converge. I love them, but, like, you know, then you ask Jake, he'll be the first one to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, bands like that, or just bands in general that were, like, huge here, but you would take them out somewhere else and no one knew about them or no one cared. Or it's, it's weird to me. I don't know. And, like, Sometimes I didn't understand that. I think Tremo was one of those bands, like, like, oh yeah, you know, we're huge around here or whatever. And then we'd talk to somebody from some other scene and they'd be like, who? Or yeah. not even just, you know, same to be said for a lot, a lot of bands. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if that's just Blacklisted. a local thing good for them, man. It's just funny just having known George since he was like 12 or something, so coming around because he was a neighborhood kid from Frankfurt or wherever, and now they, they it, it, it's, it's, they, I mean, they've been through so many lineup changes too, but I mean, they're yeah. still, still kicking and still doing their thing, man, like. They seem like, I would, they're one of the bands at Affiliate, I mean, probably before them would be Kid Dynamite, but one of the bands that, like, really established Philadelphia, you know, there were bands before that, but, like, I don't know if it's more kids or the scenes or whatever, but like blacklisted, you just I'm just amazed at how many how what their reach is. Yeah, like, they're they're one of the ones that, that you do hear about like in other areas, like people crazy. going crazy about them and I'm just like, Yeah, that's that those are those kids, that's our friends, like whatever, you know? And it's just like, Oh, they're huge, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I really love the newer stuff too. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean I only got to see Bad Luck a couple times actually. 
because like my friends wouldn't go see them. Who in their right mind would? Right? I know they were they were afraid to go. So I've only but you know uh, the last yeah I, I didn't even get everybody got all of their damage. It's like a, here we go again. Right, it's gonna get broken tonight. Somebody's gonna right. get hurt. And it's gonna be someone we know, and they're just. It's gonna be their own fault, and somebody just threw a disco ball at Steve Bush, and whatever. Oh, yeah. Blood, <laughs> blood, fireworks, <laughs> naked dudes. I was hit in the back of the head with a recliner. Not a chair, a <laughs> recliner. Um, wrestling, broken glass everywhere. Um, did I mention naked dudes? That was a thing, too, for a while there. Um, but yeah, it was, fr it was frightening. Uh, and I didn't mind the music. That was good too, you know? It was a fearful, horrifying experience, and the soundtrack was pretty good. And it's always just like, all right, how long is this balloon gonna last? Are they gonna get through more than just homicidal tonight? <laughs> <laughs> but usually the answer was no. I mean, yeah, they're, they're Pennsylvania. Yeah, no. Barrel cool. Ground is one of the most underrated bands they were fun. They were cool. of they were that cool. time period. And don't get me wrong, you know, it's not like. You know, we're going to talk about 90s bands too, oh, we're mostly, old, you but, know, cause we're old. And, but you know, Barrel Ground was actually really good, and I saw them at Unity Street. <laughs> I remember uh, that show. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah. And that was a crazy, and it was great because they had this awful situation where, uh, you know, Rick to Life used to steal people's demos and dump uh -huh. them and sell them. We all know this. There's no room. Come on, we all know it's true. And he mixed up their demo. So I got a demo from a band called Out of Step. Uh, it was ridiculous because it was written in graffiti, like they were gangsters. Of course they were, in the 90s. <laughs> Every and I put it in and I'm like, this is crazy, graffiti. this band's so heavy! And it was Barrel Ground, it was their demo. Rick put the wrong thing in there? Yeah, they knew exactly. As soon as I came, I was like, you know, I thought he was out They knew exactly. They're like, yeah, yeah, man. Nah. Um, yeah, I thought they didn't get much respect. And then like going later, because I did go to shows later, I also, I used to really like that band Damage. I thought that band damage was Robbie's? Really yeah, yeah, Robbie's band was real, real good. And it, you know, when they were around, people got hyped. And then now, no one, I never hear anyone talk about that band, ever. And yeah. I just feel like that's a band that should be getting some, like, remembering respect, some some nostalgic respect. That band was doing it good. And Rishi Rojas was in the band. I love him. Yes, it's still the band that had the biggest influence on me at that time. And I still care about them. And I don't know why they bring this up before. All is filled. Right. That go. that is to me the tragedy of the '90s through the early 2000s. Is that, that no matter game. what happened to that band, they never got big. No one ever heard about them. They busted ass for nothing. And I got to tell them, I, you know, if, I don't know if they'll ever see this. I drove from uh, Norfolk, Virginia, to uh, Fredericksburg or Ville or whatever the hell it is in Virginia to see them play. And it was a show when they were on tour with Ed Dine. Was that the Ed Dine. Yeah. And uh, those. Uh, was terrible. And Sorry. and and <laughs> some people who I don't know who they are, so I won't say anything. Jumped Ed Dine, and they had to leave the show. Oh, and I had driven that. hours to go see all this fun. I was like, I'm in living in Virginia now. I'm gonna get a taste of Pennsylvania. And no, sure, they they left. So they jumped Ed Dine. They did. They had beef <laughs> with someone apparently. Ooh. And as and they were driving, they were like they were like punching Virginia. the van as they were driving away. I was like, no. <laughs> <Punches> <laughs> the van. Well, yeah. And it was, I was just like, <laughs> what, oh! what is that gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm mad at you. I'm gonna punch but you. But all this fun. I mean, every time I saw them, it, it was. Was visceral. It was powerful. Absolutely fucking terrifying. They yeah. beat themselves into oblivion. Oh yeah. Played. And even they're one of those bands that every time it was scary back when I first started seeing them and I didn't know them and I was like, mm. fuck, these dudes are nuts. There's yeah. two singers and they're punching each other in the face while they play. What's going on here? <laughs> and they're one of those bands that you know they 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 won't play for you know way long time. They get back together. You go skeptical. How is this going to be good? I don't know about this. And they just destroyed I've never it. seen a bad All Felt set ever. Oh, man. And the last Ooh, time man. I saw them, I gave myself a concussion from 